Since it's going to be a little bit more of a boring stream, I figured I'd answer some questions. And I didn't ask anybody, what do you wanna know? So um, I wrote some down. <laughs> Hopefully they're um, interesting topics because I didn't ask anyone. I'm just gonna give you information that you didn't ask for. All right, so why don't I just start with one of my questions? Um, here's an easy one. Thanks for asking this question, no one. Where am I from and where do I live? I brought this up briefly in the last stream. I am originally from upstate New York and I currently live in Oregon. I grew up in central New York. So if you're familiar with the shape of New York, it's kind of like got the straight side and then Long Island comes down and then it kind of goes up as a flat part, as a weird Western portion and then kind of goes up. Just thinking of that like weird shape, I'm like right in the center of it, or I was right in the center of it, I should say. It was very rural. I kind of lived in the woods. I liked the area I grew up in, but I didn't love um, necessarily the population. <laughs> it was just not my ideal place to live. And I didn't really travel much as a kid, so I don't really have a lot of exposure to other places to really know where I wanna settle in. Though I have, I will say I've settled in here. But anyway, so I'm from, like I said, upstate New York and then moved to Oregon. I met my husband on the internet and then he asked me if I wanted to move out to Oregon. And I was like, sure. So decided to move out here. And I moved when I was 20 and have been out here for, I moved in 2000, I'm like, how old am I? <laughs> 2000, I'm just gonna blame this like mental block on the vaccine, <laughs> cause I can't even think. I moved in 2010, it's 2021. So that's 11 years. I'm. It's been 11 years, cause I moved in 2010, April. So yeah, ooh, that was a lot of thinking. What the hell is wrong with me? So that's where I'm from and where I live. What other questions did no one ask that I'm going to answer? I like wrote down a bunch of questions and I'm like, I don't really want to answer that. I don't want to talk about that. Talk about where I went to college. So I went to college at Oregon State University. I did some lower level classes at the community college in Portland. So I went to PCC, Portland Community College for a couple years and did a dual enrollment through the community college and the university. Um, just because it was less commuting for me and less expensive to to take the community college classes, obviously. So I did that and I chose Oregon State University because it had the program that I wanted. I started university when I was 25. So I didn't go straight out of high school into university. And so I didn't like move to a, I didn't move to my college. I was already living in this house and pretty settled. We didn't want to move. My husband had a job. So I commuted to Oregon State and that was hour and 45 minutes, two hour drive one way. <laughs> So it was a rough five years and I can't even explain how sick I am of talking about it. Like I know people are probably sick of me talking about it too. Like, yeah, we know you commute a lot, shut up. Um, <laughs> and trust me, I don't, I don't like that it became such a huge part of my identity is like, I'm commuting two hours, I'm that idiot. But it just made sense for us at the time. So yeah, I went to school at Oregon State. They had the program that I wanted. The second closest school was down in Eugene. Like there, there's only two schools in this entire state that had the program that I wanted, which is dietetics. And the second closest one was, I forget how far away Eugene is. I think it's another two hours or something or like another hour. So it would have been like a three hour commute. I, at that point, I probably would have just moved down there, but I chose Oregon State by default because it was closer. I don't regret going there. I think it was a really good school. Obviously any university or large organization has its plus sides and downsides and areas for improvement a decent experience. This is really great having a one-sided conversation. <laughs> Something I was thinking about today was my intention with these live streams or streaming on Twitch in general. And I think with this platform, I mostly see this platform as like a younger population. And for myself, I want to, like right now my business is mostly focusing on dietitians or healthcare private practice sort of people who are um, kind of on YouTube and Instagram and social media and generally just on the internet creating content but in the future when I start doing my own sort of nutrition focused either counseling or some sort of nutrition focused business I'd like to incorporate 
live streaming into that because I think it's a really, it's somewhere where that audience is currently. I watch a lot of streamers, well not a lot, I watch a handful of streamers and I just think their audiences are really eager to listen to their, their um, the, the streamer that they, they watch. Not to say that I think that I'm gonna have like a huge audience that really wants to listen to me, um, but I do think that there's opportunity to explore this platform to utilize it as a sort of like a engage in conversation casually about you know any number of things it doesn't necessarily have to be nutrition but it's just a platform to kind of build your your know like and trust factor which is something that my um, business coach has been talking a lot about but putting yourself on this platform if this is the audience that you want to talk to um, I think is a good thing I am terrible at gaming but I think it would be really fun to do some gaming in the future I'd also like to maybe use it to maybe stream some editing sort of things so for say nutrition undergrads who who are just learning about the opportunities in video editing. I'm sure they probably had exposure to it in high school because kids these days <laughs> have that sort of exposure to social media and um, Twitch and these sorts of platforms much earlier. Like I, I think, I don't know, Twitch is relatively young, I think. I don't actually know when Twitch came out, but you know, kids have grown up with these platforms as opposed to me who's coming back and learning it. Anyway, for dietitians or healthcare professionals who want to learn about nutrition editing or something I don't know maybe see that's the thing like nutrition professionals I feel like are going to want to access that information either through classes or through YouTube or through zoom or some other like Facebook live or Instagram live but I think twitch would be a good I don't know I haven't really explored Facebook for that before because I know that there are a lot of dietitians on Facebook and maybe they would prefer that platform as opposed to twitch which Oh, my arm. <laughs> There's that sore arm. Yeah, so that's what I see Twitch as being for me. I maybe want to pursue counseling of, or just having open conversations or being available to answer questions about nutrition or cooking or whatever. So being able to talk to people about that on Twitch, I think would be, I don't know, seems like a good platform for it, but I don't know if live streaming is necessarily for me. Obviously I get nervous and don't know what the hell to talk about. Mostly because right now starting out, I'm talking to no one. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. There's definitely a learning curve, but I think it'll be worth it to pursue it just for the sake of trying it, just to give my experience if anybody asks. I just hadn't talked about like why I'm streaming on Twitch at all, and I thought I'd articulate it kind of a little bit. I don't know. I feel like people think like, why are you streaming on Twitch? Like, why don't you do an Insta live or whatever? But I don't know. I see this like sort of casual thing, sort of like a drink and draw, sit in my studio just farting around, doing things um, out here, like painting, more of a quiet time, more of a casual time, but then maybe doing live streams if people are interested in, you know, I think watching someone live edit, but doing it in a way where it's very audience oriented. So you're like, I'm learning how to edit. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to add this effect. How do I do this? And being able to like open up iMovie or open up Final Cut Pro and walking somebody through it on my screen so that they can pull it up and like do it along and figure it out. I think that would be really helpful. I'm sure people are doing it. I know people are doing it, but just because other people are doing it doesn't mean I can't do it. You know, you know, you know. Because the thing with being like, oh, somebody else is already doing that. Why should I do that? It's like that person might be saying it in a way that's not clear to this whole group of people. Whereas if you could understand where these people are in their period in their life, you could maybe articulate it a little bit better to them. So I think there's always an audience. Don't see people as competition. Build each other up. Don't say, no, you shouldn't do that because I'm already doing that. No, it should be very collaborative and encouraging. That was worst articulation of my thought on that. Anyway, what is wrong with me? Let's get back to cleaning this, shall we? Nobody wants this, but we're gonna do it anyway. 